Hello again, beautiful artists, and welcome back to another episode of Paint Along with Sky. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Sky, and I post beginning level acrylic painting tutorials here on YouTube every Saturday. So make sure to hit subscribe if you'd like to join the fun and paint along, and don't forget to hit the bell icon to be notified when I post a new video. Alright, so this week we are fast approaching the holidays and I have a lovely holiday painting to share with us today. It's a classic simple ice skate here with a little bit of a holiday bouquet, including one of my favorite holiday flowers, a poinsettia. And we're going to be using our four standard brushes today from the kit that I recommend. So it comes with a large square brush, medium sized pointed sable brush, and then two small detail brushes small and smaller. Gonna get those in the water cup off the side of the screen. We're starting vertically today. I know usually we do horizontal tutorials, but I just felt like this painting really needed a vertical orientation. So we're gonna mix it up and try something a little bit different today. Uh, I have three colors to start with for my background step. So I just have a warm burnt sienna type brown and then some black and white. If you'd like to see a full materials list, check the description box below. It'll bring you over to my website. And also just in the description box below, there's all the colors that you'll need for today's painting. All right, let's go ahead and jump on in. So we're gonna start really simple today with our largest brush here for our background step. And we're gonna mix up a light beige to get started. And so all we have to do for that is just mix our light brown or our warm brown with white to create a light warm brown. We're going to start right in the center here. I'm going to grab a little bit more white, make that a little bit lighter, just blending right on the canvas, which you can do with acrylics, and then a little bit of water always, remember, to help the paint go nice and smooth and get down into those canvas textured crevices. All right, soak it into that canvas texture. And then we're just starting there in the center, super easy. And then I'm gonna grab a little bit of brown and a little bit of black, not too much black though. We're gonna go for a nice medium brown, gorgeous. And we're gonna go along the outside edge with this darker brown, a little bit of water as well, always. Keeping the brush moving all different directions here, working pretty quickly with our acrylic paint so that it doesn't dry before we get a chance to blend. Okay, but that's what we're going for there is a little bit of a gradation from our light brown to a darker brown. And if you wanna have some areas where there's a little bit of more of a blackish brown and then some areas where maybe it's a little bit more of just that warm brown, that's good to have a little bit of color variation in here you actually don't want it too perfect and consistent. Okay, we're going for rustic. That's what the vibe is with this painting today. Okay, now same idea. Along the top part of the canvas as well. We want to fill in our entire canvas with this step. Again, using enough water to help it soak in nicely and get that first layer of paint onto our canvas. I'm using a canvas board here. I don't recommend using acrylic on paper unless it's just for practice, but it's gonna drive you crazy because it's gonna buckle. This is a pretty heavy bodied medium. So we need to be using canvas or canvas board or wood, something that can hold up to the paint. Okay, and then blended it all in and you've gone a little bit too dark so I want that center to be light again. I'm just going to add some more light color right back on top. And you can kind of work back and forth there and create a nice little background how you like. Whether it be more light, a little bit darker, whatever you feel like will look nice. Yeah, I'm gonna add a little bit more light here and there, but you could add some more dark if you needed to. I'm just kind of helping them 
blend together. And then once we are feeling like it's looking good, we're just gonna go ahead and step away and let this dry fully, and then we'll come back for a whole lot more. I'll see everyone in a few. Okay, welcome back artists. We have a completely dry background and fresh colors on my piece of palette paper here. So I have some black and white, I have some cadmium red, a little bit of my phthalo green, and some yellow. I rinsed my brushes and got fresh water at break as well. Let's go ahead and jump right back on into it. I'm going to grab my second to smallest detail brush for a little bit of sort of like sketching that we're going to do, but we're going to be using paint. So we're going to start, this is a kind of the hardest step here, everyone. So lots of courage here, deep breaths. We're gonna sketch out our whole ice skate shape with this white before we start filling things in. So I'm gonna start by doing the bottom actual skate part, the metal blade here of the skate. And I'm going to start pretty far down and we're gonna be doing a diagonal line here, a few inches here from the bottom. And I think I'm gonna start with the curve of the skate sort of right underneath the toe. A little bit higher, with just a slight little curve. And then I'm gonna bring my brush stroke straight and diagonal. for the skate itself. Okay. I think I'm gonna have this be the top part. So this is gonna be connecting to the shoe right here. So I'm gonna come out a little bit and then I'm gonna go right parallel to that first line for the bottom part. of the skate. I'm ending it a little bit sooner than my original sketch line, a little bit shorter, and that's okay. Okay, and then I can come back in here and thicken that up a little bit. And then I'm gonna have two little connector parts here on the skate coming up from the bottom. Okay, so we have our blade shape and things will be sort of finessed once we get to the filling in part. And I'm going to do the toe of the boot. So I'm gonna have a straight line here come from that first little connector part right to the end of the blade. I'm going to loop around here for the toe. I'm going to just bring the toe in a little bit. I'm not going to do the whole lace area quite yet. I'm going to kind of see where I need to end first. I'm going to go up to this other connector part for the heel. The actual heel of the shoe. The boot, I suppose. You might be able to tell from this painting that I am not an ice skater. Because I won't know the technical terms for these things, so I'm sorry. <laughs> I have ice skated before in my life, but I mostly clung to the side of the wall. Okay, and I'm going to go right from the top part of the heel here. We're going to do a little bit of a curve up for the arch of the foot and then it's going to connect to the boot part there. So now I can see a little bit better what the shape is here. I'm going to go around the heel, not too high up. About like so. And let's see, a little bit higher up until we get to the top part there. 
All right, that's a pretty okay looking shape. And then we'll have the little inside liner sort of folded over the top. So there we have our basic ice skate shape. I'm a little bit further over than I'd like to be, but what I'm gonna do is just kind of center the flower a little bit off center and that will be okay. Let's go ahead and start filling in the ice skate shape now. And I'm gonna do some gray here for the top part. I'm gonna work from the top down here and give this top part a minute to dry before we come in and add the flowers. Okay, just filling that in to the sketch line and then covering the sketch line as well. Okay, and then we're gonna take just a pinch darker and come down here for our blade. Okay, just filling in one shape at a time. Okay, we're right along the bottom, covering that sketch line. A little bit darker gray, just a tiny bit. We want to get nice, clean coverage here. And this part is metal as well. You know, if you had a metallic paint, that would look cool, I think. We used metallic gold a couple weeks ago for our ornament painting class. And that was fun. Okay. Nice clean coverage there. Very cute little boot shape. Like a ice skate pinned to the wall filled with a holiday bouquet. That was the inspiration. Okay. That's looking pretty good. All right, we'll just let that dry as well. Just getting these base colors for now. We can take our white into the main boot section. And actually, let's go ahead and use a slightly bigger brush for the slightly bigger section, if you want. Always use a smaller brush if that gives you more control. Nice, smooth, filled in shapes. Keeping the brush strokes sort of going the direction of the shape. Okay, so if it's a long shape, we're doing those long brush strokes curving around these curves. Every brush stroke matters. All right. I think I might even switch again. Back to the small brush again. Saved some time there with the medium brush. I like that brush too though. All right, getting that nice solid filled in with white. Like so. And then our heel is gonna be done with a very dark gray. That's gonna be our last little fill-in area. Very satisfying. Little bit 
of an angle. So it's going to be narrower at the heel. Okay, that's not a perfect rectangle. Important. Okay. Looking good. Okay, and I think our first layer should be somewhat dry enough to come around and do a little bit of outlining. And I'm just gonna come around with that dark gray with that either second to smallest detail brush or even your smallest detail brush. And I'm going to refine my shape with a black outline. Just going to give it that sort of cartoon illustrator type look with that black as a shadow. And this is our opportunity to cover any sketch lines as well. And then I can also go ahead and outline the boot shape as well. Just like so. And when the curve of foot arch and the back heel and the top as well. Okay, this part we're going to be mostly covering with flowers. And I'm going to do a quick couple brush strokes from the top, from the front backwards, and from the backwards towards the front. And then also some highlights with some white in that area as well, but in the center, like so. And you can let it blend a little bit. Okay. And we need a little bit of highlights here in our heel. I'm going to take a light gray and do a couple quick brush strokes right there. Make sure that I don't bring too much. Okay, and a little bit of white here in the blade. We're going to accentuate the curves and do a little shine mark on the bottom of the blade as well. And in our shoe here, let's take a little bit of light gray and add just a little bit of shadowing here and there, just like so. Kind of lean into that cartoon feel Okay, we can go ahead and do the eye holes for the laces right now as well with that same brush and also with gray. We're mostly just working with gray here in the ice skate part. I'm going to come right next to my black outline. I'm going to work my way down until I get closer to the toe part. I'm going to do some little rivets there and then I'm going to rinse my brush and come back in with that almost black and I'm going to do a quick little curve line for the laces. So cute. 
Okay, let's go ahead and let this little boot area dry for a minute and then we're going to come back once this is dry and add our nice red flowers and we don't have to worry about blending into our white or gray or messing anything up. So I'll see everyone in another couple minutes. Okay, welcome back artists. We have a dry mid layer now and we're ready to create our beautiful bouquet and just create some final details. Uh, really quick with my tiniest brush, I'm gonna come in here and just finish the little lace area here in our boot, very tiny brush, with just a really tiny little half circle with black right in those gray circles, just like so. Okay, that looks good. I think I'll grab my medium small, second to smallest detail brush again for the flowers. And I'm going to use like a pink color. Such a pretty color that is. A little bit on the light side for my sketching. I think I'm gonna sneak a little bit of black in there too. Just for a slightly more sort of berry tone. Pretty vibrant here. Feel free to sketch with white if you would prefer. Uh, this way with the red, there's no going back. All right, and I'm going to center my main hydrangea flower. And I'm going to be centering my main big red poinsettia flower, kind of dead center here on my canvas. And I'm going to have sort of like the center part as a little circle first, and that's going to be where I build my flower around. And I'm going to create petals coming out from every direction, just in that sort of basic like leaf type shape. And I'm going to go around and do four main ones right there in the corner. We're going to be bringing quite a lot of our bouquet or just a bit, but a fair amount of that gorgeous greenery and flowers down over our boot. And I'm going to just start filling these in as I go as well. One at a time or two at a time or four at a time, however you would like to create them it really is fine. And I'm really feeling already the holiday spirit in this painting. Okay. One, two, three, and four. Tiny bit of water always helps that paint go nice and smooth. And filling those in in the direction of the shape. A little bit of space in between the petals for our secondary petals. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Let's take some white and we're gonna do a quick little highlight on some of these leaves. Just something really subtle, working with that wet paint still. And you wanna make sure that you don't see the boot underneath anymore. So we might need multiple layers there, but that's okay. We'll just hit that with another layer of red in a minute. A little bit of pink in each one of these for a nice, subtle, highlight. And I made my petals a little bit different from each other. And that makes it just a little bit more interesting. And let's grab a slightly darker red now for our second tier petals. Just going to sneak a little bit of black in there. Don't want to go too dark. Just about like so, kind of a cranberry, a little bit of white, and I'm going to go in between 
those first petals with our second layer of more petals. Okay, and there's our basic flower shape looking good. I'm gonna take some of that dark red and get that all filled in as well. Feel free to use your smaller brush for these tight spots. Very light pressure on the brush though will give you pretty good control even with a slightly larger detail brush like I'm using right now. So now we have those nice two tones. Lovely. Okay, and then in the center, I'm gonna rinse my brush. I'm gonna take some yellow and green and mix it together and make a beautiful light green. Sneak a little bit of white in there as well. And I'm just going to tap some green into the center, just as that first layer of color there in the center. We'll come back with a second layer there. And that's looking very nice. Let's give that just a moment to dry and we'll do some greenery around this flower now to sort of fill out our Christmas bouquet. So same brush, I'm gonna stick with that second to smallest and I'm gonna take some green I'm going to mix a beautiful sort of Christmassy green with just the phthalo green and white and I'm going to do some sprigs of pine by starting with a straight line like so and I think I'll do one over here as well coming out a few different directions. We're going to have some holly berries too, so I'm kind of just balancing things out nicely. And let's do one more, kind of coming there from the boot. And once I get that first main stem brush stroke, we're going to come back in with that same color. We're going to have a little feathery brush strokes coming out from either side. Probably gonna have it be so that my flower is on top of the greenery there. So you gotta understand your, your bouquet as you make it. So a little bit of trailing off there, fuzziness, that's okay. It's better to have a sort of trailed off fuzzy texture on the canvas than it is to go in and do a million coats and end up with super thick lines. Okay, try to come from underneath here. The vertical format, it's much further away from me. <laughs> Usually the horizontal is a little bit closer, so I'm reaching and I'm trying to get uh, good control. For me, I get better control when things are closer to me. Don't actually have the world's best eyesight either. <laughs> I think I'm hoping that looks good up there. We're gonna get a little bit further down. They never look as good as my originals. Um, but I think it still looks pretty cute from what I can see with my limited eyesight. Okay. That looks pretty good. We'll sort of fill things out again with our holly. So cute. I'm gonna grab a little bit of white. I'm gonna create a lighter version of that color for a highlight. I'm gonna come in with that same brush right on top of that first layer of green. I'm just gonna do a second layer of a lighter green. I wanna make sure that it's light enough to create enough contrast with that first green color. Just right on top of the same colors. A little bit of blending action. Flew up there. And working my way down. I'm getting every little part. Super cute. All right, let's do our holly berry leaves. Holly leaves first. 
I'm gonna take some green and mix it with a little bit of yellow this time. So I have a different hue of green. And here's where you can create some holly leaves. And I think I'll do just some on the bottom this time. I'm gonna have my holly berries kind of be over here. And let's go from right here. We're gonna do a few little curved brush strokes like so. And then curve back the other direction. So cute. And how about from right here? One, two, three. Nice. In my original, I have some additional holly sort of up here as well. I don't quite have the space for that up there today, so we'll do a different leaf there in just a minute, just so we have a little bit even more interest in our tones. And when you're making that flower arrangement in real life, less is not more, right? You wanna have lots of beautiful flowers or lots of greenery to fill it out. And let's do a lighter version of the green. Like so, and we'll do a couple little additional leaves to get everything nice and lush. Very cute. Okay, from the top and bottom area there. Looking good. Okay, let's do a little bit of highlights on those as well. So for our holly leaves, I'm gonna take my green over here. Take a little bit of yellow for a beautiful highlight color. I'm just going to do a couple of little brush strokes on each leaf for some highlights. Let it blend in a little bit to that wet paint. And then an even lighter highlight here on our poinsettia leaves. Okay, that's looking very cute. Just a few more little details, um, but we're moving right along here. And let's go ahead back into our poinsettia now. And you may need to hit any area with a second coat of paint. And you can still see through. Okay, and that's all right. And then Let's take a little bit of a darker red. Not too dark. Okay, perfect, like a burgundy. And we're gonna go from the center here. We're gonna connect it to the outside and it can either be a straight line or it can be slightly curvy. Like so. And we can go ahead and outline our petals with that color as well. Create a nice clean shape all the way around. And then we're gonna do a few little brush strokes coming down from that center line diagonally out towards the tips there of the petals. Beautiful, and it's okay if things are looking a little bit dark because we're gonna add a highlight in just a minute. Okay. Lovely. And just making sure I have that center line down every petal. And then coming back in with a couple just quick little hash marks. Boop, boop, boop. Up and down each of the center lines. This is our focal point of the painting. So 
we're giving that area some TLC. I think that looks just very Christmassy. And let's try to find some clean white. Hmm, I don't think we're gonna find it. I'm gonna go get some. There we go. Put a little bit of clean white on my palette paper. Back in action. I'm gonna take a little bit of pink over here. And I'm going to come from my leaves, my petals, from these outside edges down into the petal. So outside edge like so, and then alongside the dark color that you just added, inside there, and then right alongside the same. So you wanna go all on like the upper side there of that dark line all the way down. And create a little bit of a highlight on the outside edge and you should hopefully still see a little bit of the original color too. If you're getting too stripey, you might want to add some of that base red back on. We're gonna walk our way all the way around and on these front tier petals, I'm doing a little bit more highlighting than in the back. Okay, because they're up front. All the tops working the way down. It's not an exact science, really. It's a little bit different for each petal. You don't want them to all look exactly the same, really. Okay, but it should accentuate each petal. Okay, that's looking good. Let's grab a little bit of a darker shadow color for our green. We're going to come into our sprigs of greenery again with one last color, just sort of here and there. Very nice. Okay, and then some holly berries. Can't forget our holly berries with just pure red. And I'm going to put those right on our little holly plant here. You can do however many you like. I think I'm just going to stick with three berries. Just like so. They're cute. And then a little bit of my dark green. I'm going to make a slightly lighter version of it for these slightly lighter leaves on the outside. And I'm going to do the same brush strokes, same shape there as the petals. And because they're the same plant. Just like so, and then in our center, final little piece of the resistance, we're gonna take a light greenish yellow. I'm just gonna tap a couple dots there in the center there for our gorgeous poinsettia. Very cute. Okay. And that's all the instruction that I have for everyone this week. So let me know what you thought of today's holiday painting. I'd also love to see your work and I've created a Facebook group that's free to join for my students to do just that. There's a link in the description box below to join that as well. We'd love to have you over there and I hope you enjoyed painting along and until next time, stay creative.